the biggest buyer of stocks has an insatiable appetite for more at any cost. You came here for the truth. Today, I've got a big video for you. Today, we're going to look at what's happening in the stock market as well as the economy. The first thing I want to look at is the economic debt boom. Not an economic boom, but there's the debt in between very key to understand the second thing is crunch time as it relates primarily to commodities as well as number three the biggest stock buyer who is it can you guess let's get into all of that and more we can begin right here mx sees holiday spending soaring and this is something that you would suggest well the economy must be booming right well, the spending is up, but the economy, it depends where you are. So I wanted to highlight that to begin this video because it's going to set the tone for the remainder here. Canadians embarked on a $193 billion mortgage binge. Now comes the reckoning. This is what I've talked about many times before, and there are some out there who refuse to acknowledge it. Low quality mortgages now make up a quarter of all mortgages. Do you see that? Do you see what's happening here? It is not like 2007. No, it is different in its own way. But we have to understand that there's it's not stable as they suggest it is. I've talked to you about how if you are only making $100,000 a year, if you're living in San Francisco, you're going to have trouble. Well, apparently making $300,000 in San Francisco can still mean you are living paycheck to paycheck. And of course, you can read the article out of the San Francisco Gate. But what I wanted to highlight here is that it doesn't matter what somebody makes, the average person, the average household. If they get a salary that's, let's say, 50000 and then they move their way up to 100000 okay, let's make the numbers easy. They've doubled their salary. What are they going to do? they're going to double their expenses. And of course, doubling your expenses, that's like two of you out there in the economy, right? So now the economy is loving that. You're spending more. You're buying the bigger house. You're renovating the home. You're getting another car. You're going to this place and that place and restaurants and clothes and everything else. You're doing good for the economy. But what's really happening here is a debt binge. Vacant piece of land less than 30 centimeters wide hits the Toronto market and attracting attention. This was brought to me by a faithful subscriber. And you can see right here in between, you've got a very small piece of land in between there that is essentially worth quite a bit of money. Okay. It's uh, at this time, we'll see what happens. You know, it just shows you right here, this little tiny blue sliver of in there is, uh, I believe it was going for 50,000 at the last time I checked. But the point here is that things are getting wacky. That is not a, an example of necessarily, I mean, who knows what, what it's going to be. But there are some seriously thin homes that are going for astronomical prices. But the point is there's speculation, lots of it. Now, Jeffrey Goonlock, the bond king, sees rough waters for market as the Fed pursues taper. At this time, if I show you what's happening in the markets themselves, you can look, this happens to be, if I show you the broad markets, we can see all four of the US markets going here, the broad markets. And essentially, after declining, I was telling everybody right at the absolute peak here, I believe this is primarily primarily during, during my live sessions, where I told you right here, we better watch out below because there's going to be a little dip. And now you can see what has happened. And then I was explaining in the, I believe it was the previous or the one before that video, essentially saying we are probably going to see a bounce back. This is all, I don't want to say predictable, but it is relatively understood what happens here, the ebbs and flows in the market. But we can zoom out a little bit more and you can clearly see the direction where you have some of these tops that are forming, but they are higher highs. The market loves it. But as he's saying here, Gunlock, that the Fed's taper and the potential increase in interest rates puts a real big, uh, let's just say a change in what has happened. Suddenly things are different in that respect. 
taxpayer borrowing costs, poised to crimp economic growth. And he said that stimulus artificially propped up the economy. I completely agree with all of that. Now, oil, after coming down, uh, I think it was at $66 a barrel, at least when I had looked at it. But you could see it's coming up to nearly $72 a barrel. So is something changing? Well, a few things are happening at this time. European natural gas futures jumped as trader weighed the risk of fresh international sanctions against top supplier Russia and its new pipeline project. We will see what happens here. Nord Stream 2 needs to come online. That's affecting what's going on in Europe. Prices are quite high. And, you know, as you can see in this chart right here, you know, the prices were coming down. It was a great thing to see this. Okay, finally, people are getting a breather. And then it reverses in an instant. So we're going to see. I'm going to follow it for you. I'll let you know the progress. Now, there have been three extremely important monetary events over the last little while. And you look at this from 1913, the Federal Reserve. You got 1944 and into 45 with the creation of Bretton Woods, the IMF, the World Bank, and so on, sort of all lumped together. And then 1971, of course, being very significant, Nixon pulling the US, and by extension, the whole world off of any semblance of uh, real money of gold. And here we have today, where you can look at the real Fed funds rate since 1971, showing us the effective rate. And it's just giving us a little bit of a different look at things, okay? The US Fed funds rate showing us this compared to the CPI, urban consumers, uh, you know, the, the inflation rate. Essentially, when you add the two together, put them together, it shows us that we are actually negative minus 6% because of what has happened. Imagine how stimulative it is when your interest rates are minus 6%. There are people out there who say the US is going to go for negative interest rates, but if we look at it the way it's it is in reality, not necessarily the Fed funds rate alone, well, then we're going to see something different. You could look at it in a different way as well using the shadow Fed funds rate. And this actually comes directly from the Federal Reserve's own website, by the way. But um, Double Line, which is Jeffrey Gunlock's company, just posted the chart, minus 8%. So how, what is this? What is this calculation? Well, essentially, it's just factoring in if there wasn't money printing and it was all like interest rate based, well, what would the rate be? And essentially at minus 8%. So this right now is historically, we've never seen anything like this before. This is the easiest money ever in history. And so should you buy the dip? Now you waited this long into the video and I want to thank you for that. Right now, I'm going to talk about buying the dip. I'm going to talk about what it looks like. I'm going to show you who the biggest buyer is, but you have to wait until this point in the video and we're going to slam through this real quick. Goldman Sachs had bad news for investors rushing to buy the dip. The Goldman Sachs risk appetite indicator below zero may have further to fall. Deutsche Bank sees turnaround in the next three to four weeks. What we are seeing right here at this time in the markets is very crucial because we're coming into the end of the year and that's the Santa Claus rally. But there are a lot of headwinds. I think what's happening right now, uh, the worry of contagion, let's say, um, has diminished somewhat. That might be a little rough waters. But uh, the more important thing is the Federal Reserve and their taper. I just want to show you statistically what you can see here. I mean, the market is looking rather bullish overall, at least for this short period. We'll see what happens. That doesn't mean it's going to go up. That just means it's bullish. It means it looks based on the indicators. We went way oversold right here as of, let's say, December 1st, December 2nd time frame on all of the markets. And as a result, you look at it, it's simply a matter of time before that market comes back up. And as you can see, that's exactly what happened in the following days went up higher. What kind of stocks went up higher? Well, you could see unprofitable tech names, ARC, Momentum Long Index, SPAC Index, and Bitcoin as well. All the risk taking. But who's the biggest buyer? Thank you, thank you, thank you for staying in. You can look at Goldman Sachs. It is without a doubt the stock 
buybacks. That's right. Who's the biggest buyer of, well, I don't want to name names because I haven't checked into each stock, but of Apple, of, of Goldman Sachs, of, you know, Amazon. It's the stock themselves. It's the company themselves buying in at a record, a record. We will see what happens by the end of the year, but give or take, we are going to be at a record high. Look at it. Weekly net buying or selling by client type corporates. That's the corporations. The corporations buying like we have never seen before. Excessive, excessive to this degree. And that, you know, we may say that this should be illegal or it's terrible, it's good, it's bad, it's great, it's whatever. What it does to the market is it pushes it up. You can look at the index. They separate the index. Those who are doing the buybacks, those who are not doing the buybacks, the companies doing the buybacks have performed better. And so that's that's just the way it is. And I just want to let you know what's happening. Corporates were the biggest net buyers. You could look at that specifically from the 29th of November until the 3rd of December, just showing you very clearly and over the four-week average as well. So this has been going on. It's not just today or this week or, you know, for the last year. Since 2009, this has been the case. The problem here that we run into is that liquidity is falling because the hedge funds, they're selling off. And I don't know if I pull this up here. Yeah, you can look at that. Hedge funds are not doing well. This is just showing you the returns, um, the red line down, a dismal return this year for hedge funds. People think that hedge funds have all this money. Well, maybe they have money to spend, but they don't necessarily do well. And most of them are um, unable to perform well and, and, and actually close down. Retail favorites, though we have seen a bounce back in the last couple of days, retail favorites have actually declined considerably over basically November into December. And the same thing going on with the hedge fund index. Okay. So what is happening here? A lot. It's kind of messy. The taper is the number one thing that we should be paying attention to. At the same time, we can look at these. We can do the swing trading if that's what you're interested in. If you want to know more about swing trading, if you want to know more about how to profit from this, you got to tell me. I don't see enough hands being raised on that. So it's all, it's all up to you. But that's it. If you support this channel and the message, well, then all you got to do is hit that thumbs up button okay it lets me know that you support the work you support the information and you appreciate this simply click that it's right down below and if you haven't seen this video yet you definitely want to check it out so just click it and i'll see you there